everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here today to record my favorite books of 2019. I'm gonna combine them all into one video or else this series of videos is never gonna get made. So I'm here to tell you my favorite fiction books of the year, non-fiction books of the year, and comics and graphic novels as well. I've read a lot of stuff last year, like more than I've ever read. So for my list I ended up coming up with 10 for each and a couple lists have some honorable mentions. So I thought I'd go through them and list from 10 to number one for each category and I think I shall start with best fiction because I think this is what I'm going to take the least amount of time to talk about. So for fiction the majority of things on here I don't think there is one adult book on here. Everything on here is either a middle grade or a young adult book. This last year was just not the year for me to read adult fiction. I feel like I really want that to be something that I focus on in 2020 to read more adult fiction. I just read a lot of things for younger kids. So here we go. Number 10 is Heroin by Mindy McGuinness. I think this was a year where I finally decided that yes, Mindy McGuinness is probably up there with some of my favorite young adult authors. Um, she writes really gritty young adult, which I like, and whenever I get asked for like realistic fiction young adult authors at the library, I always mention Mindy McGuinness. This is a book about a girl facing um, a heroin addiction as a result of an injury that she suffers. She plays sports and she suffers an injury and then she kind of befalls into this drug addiction and a lot of really bad repercussions happen as a result. Number nine on this list is Strange Birds by Celia C. Perez. This is my second book by this author that I've read. The first Rule of Punk is the other book that she's published. This is only her second book so I'm kind of keeping up with her publications. This one follows a group of like four girls who are all kind of very different and you follow them trying to stand up for basically bird rights. But it's mostly about developing friendships between four very different girls and you know the, the magicalness of friendship especially during the summertime when you're just spending time together all the time. Number eight on this list is The Wild Robot by Peter Brown. This is a very beloved middle grade book that I've only just got into this year. I really really enjoyed it. It was very whimsical. I definitely recommend it if you're just looking for something that's light-hearted but also has kind of like an emotional impact to it. It's just a very sweet story of this robot who's basically the mother now to this baby gosling that thinks that the robot is its mother and just whimsy and weirdness happens after that. Number seven on this list is Ghost by Jason Reynolds. Um, I read this towards the beginning of the year and um, I read Patina after that. I need to read two more in that series but this is a very lovely middle grade series um, for sports fans and for people who really like fast-paced books. Jason Reynolds is a great author and someone that I definitely recommend that you check out. Number six on my list is Wish Tree by Katherine Applegate. Another very lovely story that I read at the end of the year. Its main character is an oak tree who kind of sees everything that's going on around her in this neighborhood and this book is really a focus on Islamophobia and a neighborhood that's telling people that they shouldn't be there. And this oak tree kind of just sees all of this happen and wants to make this family, this little girl who's part of this family, have a new friend. And so it's the animals and the tree kind of getting together to get these two kids to be friends together. Number five on my list is The Hunger Games. This was a reread for me and yes, it made it here on this list still. I still think that it's a great book. Uh, I thought that maybe I wouldn't get as much from it the second time reading it. I think I loved it with the same amount of star ratings. It's just very exhilarating and fast paced and has great characters and I forgot a Lot of things too which made it a great reread and it was the first time I ever listened to it on audiobook. Number four on my list is one that I've talked about all year long and I'm gonna keep talking about it and that's Front Desk by Kelly Yang about a girl and her parents who have immigrated from China and they're kind of in charge of taking care of this motel and it's all about the people who live at this motel, all the people and the interactions that they have as a result and Mia the main character going to school as well and her having a kind of a difficult relationship with the son of the person who owns the whole hotel, um, who's kind of like a very mean man. Yeah, it's got a lot of great discussions about race and class um, and immigration status here in the United States, um, and I really, really enjoyed it. I'm excited for more by Kelly Yang this upcoming year in 2020. Number three on my list is On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. This is her second book and one I was super excited to read. Um, I've also mentioned this one in my past couple videos as one that I really would like you guys to check out. 
especially if you really enjoyed The Hate You Give. I think I liked On the Come Up better than The Hate You Give. It's got lovely characters, it's got a great plot, it's got a story that I haven't really come across before. A teenage girl who wants to be a musician and um, kind of all of the problems that arise from her trying to accomplish her dreams. I think the characters just have a great voice and I think that's what I like the most about Angie Thomas's books. Number two on my list is the Miscalculations of Lightning Girl, uh, a book that I really just loved the main character's narration. She's got a very interesting kind of origin story. She was hit by lightning and that's caused her kind of brain functions to be different now and she I believe can do very good math on, off the top of her head and that kind of makes her a little bit strange in her school. She has to do a group project with a few kids and it's kind of like the relationship that develop as a result of this group project. There's also a big story about um, animal rescue and they take part of this animal rescue as part of their group project. It was just very heartwarming and just made me smile when I was reading it. It was just a lovely story and it, it made me kind of like sob at the end because it was just so sweet and how it ended. And number one on this list is Tonight Owl from Dogfish, one that I've also mentioned in many videos um, this year. It's just was an awesome read, um, especially on audiobook. It was a great experience that way. It follows two girls as they're going to summer camp, as they're forced to go to summer camp by their gay dads who want to be together. And it's kind of a parent trap sort of retelling, one that will definitely like pick up your mood if you're feeling down. All right, let's talk about the best comics and graphic novels of the year. Um, I think I have 12, so two. <laughs> two honorable mentions and one of those is the Flintstones volume one. This kind of took me by surprise. I was like, why am I reading this? But I kept being recommended at work by uh, co-workers. It's a basically a satirical look at our society today through the eyes of the Flintstones. I think that's all I really have to say. Think of like all of the issues that we're going through here in the 21st century and in like this day and age politically, um, like through media and politics and all that kind of stuff. And you'll see all of that through the Flintstones and what their day-to-day life is like. The author has like this very cynical, satirical uh, kind of humor about all of it that made it really great. They can all be read as kind of like single issues in the single issues that they do so like they'll take on a specific topic or subject per issue and I really enjoyed it. Number 11 on this list is I Was There American Dream. This is a graphic memoir and it's from a mixed ethnicity girl growing up and kind of having two very different sets of parents and trying to meet their expectations because they came to the United States to give her a better life. I really like the art in this one and kind of the messages. It had a lot to say about microaggressions. Um, it was just a great insight into her life and I really enjoyed it. Number 10 on my list is To Dance and it's a special edition that just came out last year. It's a look at a ballerina and all that it takes to become a ballerina. Uh, I never really thought about like what it takes to be a ballerina. Um, it's not really a world that I know much about so this book made me learn so much about that world and I don't know made me pull for this main character who is a real person so this is based on her real life and made me pull for her life and also just to see the complete transformation from being a young girl into the woman that she is now and like how ballet and dance has you know kind of changed her life as a result. Number nine on my list is Bloom which is a fictional uh, graphic novel about two boys who kind of fall in love and it's kind of a uh, will they won't they and kind of like a hard relationship that you know they're always meant to be but they have some troubles to get there. It also has a lot of baking involved because one of the main character's parents own a bakery and so it's got really great um, images of them baking together. If you want to pick me up, I definitely recommend Bloom. Number eight on my list is Guts. This is the brand new uh, graphic novel that came out last year by Raina Telgemeier. It's based on her real life with stomach issues as a result of her anxiety and I cannot recommend it enough. If you like very uh, straightforward and um, very emotional reads about a topic like that. It's one that I'm very glad it has been published. Um, we are now talking about anxiety so much more and I feel like kids could really see themselves in this because I was an anxious kid growing up and nobody ever told me that that was okay and I just love what Raina Telgemeier is doing. She is one of the most read authors in my library and I'm just glad that she's still making more things 
for me to give to kids. Number seven on this list is Gender Queer. This is a book all about kind of not meeting gender expectations and how the author and illustrator really views themselves as non-binary. It really taught me a lot reading it, the way that they see themselves when it comes to having periods and kind of body image issues, um, how friends see them as well. It was very honest and at times very visceral about the issues that they face. I haven't heard many people talk about this one, so Gender queer. look it up, it's a really great one. Number six on my list is Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me. It made me really excited because I'll read anything by Mariko Tamaki. I love the illustrations, it's got kind of like a pink palette to it and it's so cute. It focuses on this very toxic relationship between two girls and how they just keep getting back together and breaking up. All the crap you put up with because you think like you're meant to be with this person when it's like no you're not so i just loved how deep it got it's a thicker graphic novel and i feel like it went through a lot of issues so i definitely love this one number five on my list is quiet girl in a noisy world by debbie tongue it's just comics so it's not it doesn't have like a full arc from beginning to end and we're just looking at what the author and illustrator has felt like being an introvert in this world and all the ways that her introversion kind of defines how she sees her life and how she experiences different things in her life um, including like dealing with family, um, dealing with her boyfriend and fiance, then what it's like to be a social person when you're an introvert. It's got really funny and relatable comics. My neighbor in front of us is uh, taking down his Christmas lights right now so hopefully he doesn't look over here and see me recording. Um, number four on my list is A Fire Story by Brian Feiss. A very sad um, and heartbreaking story of Brian Feiss um, losing his house as a result of fires that happened in California. It's very fascinating the way he put this together. It's kind of like what that all was like and also taking stories from other people who lost things in the fires as well. How you have to kind of compartmentalize your life because you're losing all of these like material things but at the same time there's a lot of sentimental value to a lot of material things that we keep in our houses it changed his entire life and his family's life to lose his house i pretty much will read anything by brian feist now i read another thing by him um, as a result of loving a fire story so much number three on my list is kid gloves by lucy nicely i've mentioned this in a few of my videos this year i just really enjoy lucy nicely i feel like with every graphic memoir she puts together she just gets better and better this one kind of traces the history of being a pregnant person and giving birth and the complications that may come from that through history and into the present day of her own birth story for her child um, and it was just hard-hitting, really emotional. I felt like I, I was really let into her experience. I learned a lot through it and as someone that follows her daily life through, through Instagram and seeing her kid grow up, it's kind of interesting to just see her talk about that whole experience in this one volume. Number two on my list is Becoming Unbecoming. This I feel like has crept up as the year went by. I keep thinking about it and that's why it's so high up on my list. It's also a graphic memoir graphic history that I haven't heard anybody on booktube talk about and it's a story of the author and illustrator growing up in the UK in the 70s, 80s and how her body and how her gender is seen as she gets older people start looking at her more differently and it also interwinds this with the serial killer in the UK during this time that they could not catch it talks about like how these serial killers like this and, and just creepy bad men kind of hide in plain sight. They're people that you wouldn't expect. Um, they kind of seem like everyday person because everyday men do these kinds of acts to women. It was just a fascinating way of her to talk about kind of like the trauma that her own body went through and the trauma of all of the women victims of this serial killer and the connections of all of those things. So a very fascinating, very dark and gritty but very honest too and number one on my list is good talk by mira jacob it's an awesome book about having conversations about uh, brownness and otherness in the united states and it's inspired by the author's son who's asking questions now about his race and kind of its place in the world and then it's also mira jacob talking to her husband who is a white jewish man and to her friends as well it talks a lot about politics and trump it was it was a great intellectual read for me every time that i read it i was like 
yeah, that's an interesting way to think about this, or yes, I really agree with that. It was just very emotionally touching, um, as well as intellectually stimulating, made me think quite a bit. So that's it for comics and graphic novels, now let's talk about the best nonfiction that I read in 2019. I read quite a lot of nonfiction this year that I didn't really talk about on my channel. That's kind of because I took a break in the middle half of the year, so I'm gonna try to talk as much as I can about each and kind of be more descriptive for the ones that I didn't get to talk about on my channel just so that you can see if it's something that would be for you. I think I have 10 exactly on this one, so I have no honorable mentions. And number 10 on this list is Savage Appetites by Rachel Monroe. I read this in just a few sittings in a couple days. It really kept my attention the way that it was divided. It looks into different archetypes in true crime, including like the detective, the victim, the perpetrator, and it has four different stories based off of those archetypes. So it follows four different women going Going through those things and it talks about why true crime excites those certain groups. It's definitely very gritty and I want you to be aware of that before you go into it, especially the last story was very hard for me to read. It had a lot of details that um, could be disturbing and dark for a lot of people, so I want you to be aware of that, but if you're a true crime reader, watcher, listener to a podcast, I definitely recommend this just so you can see how these archetypes work in the media that we consume that's true crime related and also to think about what you like out of true crime like what archetype you would fit number nine on my list is know my name by Chanel Miller this is a very uh, emotional and beautifully written memoir from the woman who was raped by Brock Turner her and her family going through all of that including you know the night of the night after all of the things that she ate, that had to be done to her body to collect evidence um, speaking with police and prosecutors going through trial and dealing with judges and the media. It's just very poignant and um, the way that she defends herself and defends her family is very spot on. I really enjoyed my time reading this book. Number eight on my list is She Said and it looks into how the New York Times reporters broke open the Harvey Weinstein case and how they got all of these women to speak on record about it. I think they really let victims speak their piece and to say what they're comfortable saying. They did it in a way that was very compassionate and you can completely tell that from, from the two reporters. It was very aggravating um, but also something that you feel like wow justice has sort of been served even if he doesn't go to prison for all of these things he's done just the fact that we know that I feel like they feel better as a result that they have found like the circle of women that they can speak to about this. Number seven on my list is kind of goes hand in hand with she said and that's Catch and Kill by Ronan Farrell. It also discusses those same sort of things in a compassionate way. Harvey Weinstein, Me Too, and other you know sexual abuse scandals that happened as a result of the Harvey Weinstein case but I liked it better because it was more about like the bigger systems and the bigger institutions that are trying to protect these men who are in power, what they do to catch stories and kill them, and how Ronan Farrow kind of said, F that, I'm going to tell the story, and all of the turmoil he faced trying to tell those stories. Number six on my list is My Friend Anna. This is a story for people who like to read about scams, and so if you like reading about like the fire festival and things like that, I definitely recommend this. This looks into Anna Delvey, who was a scammer in the New York area, who tried to pretend that she was an heiress, and she became friends um, with the author and kind of scammed her out of a trip in Morocco. It was pretty bonkers what happened when they ended up going to Morocco and couldn't pay for any of this extravagance that they were doing there. Seeing Anna Delvey go through trial and understanding where she came from and what led her to do this, like how do you actually go through with these kinds of things. It was a very gripping and compelling read, so if you're looking for something that's going to keep you going, especially if you don't know this story very well, I definitely recommend it on audiobook. I listened to it in like two days because I was just so amped and I needed to know how it ended, even though I already knew how it ended because I've read a lot about this case. Number five on my list is Bad Blood. I read this towards the beginning of the year and it was a fascinating look at Elizabeth Holmes, another scam basically, and also would recommend the audio book. I think that the uh, author and reporter did so much great work to kind of unravel all of this, first for the Wall Street Journal and then for his own book. I think Bad Blood the book is better than the podcast and the HBO special that they did on it as well. Um, so if you haven't read Bad Blood, I feel like everybody has. 
I recommend that you read it. Number four on my list is While the City Slept, um, which was a book that I read when we bought this house and I was listening to it while I was painting all day long. As a result, I read it in like two days because I was just listening to it nonstop as I was painting. It's a true crime book that looks into kind of a crime in progress is what the author kind of frames it as. And that's because he's looking at mental health and how this very sick person who needed help decompensates is what he calls it and kind of loses sight of himself who can't um, ask for help and ends up murdering one woman and almost murdering another one. It is a lesbian couple who was at home and he goes into their house and tries to murder both of them after he attempts to rape both of them as well. So very, you know, like a lot of content warnings here. The way that it's kind of posed is like, we knew that this person was progressively getting worse and the state or, you know, some sort of institution needed to know that and needed to put a stop to this person before they continued on progressing. Um, it kind of looks at how we let people just be because of like all the freedoms that we have here in the United States We don't like track people um, especially with mental health issues um, So it's kind of this balance of like letting people be and also kind of like following people who we know might not be okay and could commit things like this um, it also looks into kind of the survivor who went through all of this and her perspective of it now and I, I think she is a saint the way that she speaks of it and how she has moved on from it and um, how she views what happened to her and what she's doing now as a result of it like she's amazing just thinking about like what more the state could have done or um, what more mental health professionals could have done makes it a very fascinating read and very great on audiobook, in my opinion. Number three on my list is one I read towards the end of the year, and that's My Time Among the Whites. And this is a memoir, it's mostly kind of like essays of growing up in um, the Miami area and then going to college in a very white area and kind of the juxtaposition of that and how different that is. Also she has some very fascinating stories about Disney and kind of Disney culture, what that taught her growing up. A story about marriage and kind of like the marriage complex of how you know, weddings happen. It's kind of like every wedding is the same. She's got other stories about like how she became a professor and when she never saw herself as becoming a professor. She's got an interesting perspective. I think I will read more things by her, uh, especially I want to try out some of her fiction. I think it's just awesome and interesting how she grew up literally like 10 minutes from where I grew up. Number two on my list is The 57 Bus and this is a book that I've kind of been anticipating for many years. It's one that I tried really hard to find on audiobook. I felt like that was the only way I would read it because I had tried it before and kind of put it down. I took it with me on a plane ride and I read most of it on that plane ride over. I just could not stop reading once I started. It was so good. It looks at gender in this town um, when this event takes place on the city bus. Something very traumatic happens to this person who likes to wear skirts. This other person lights their skirt on fire and it's what happens as a result of all of that. You know, there's burns that happen. The person has to go to the doctor and to get that all treated. Um, and then it's kind of like the reaction from the community to all of that happened as well as the trial through all of that and then it also looks at the perpetrator and his life and kind of all the things that were happening in his life that led up to this point and how the victim sees the perpetrator. I think that the author does a good job of kind of looking at both while always telling you that this is not an okay thing to happen um, just to make you think about like all the things happening in any one person's life that might affect their day to day. Um, and it also taught me a lot about gender and this person and how their family looks at the way that they dress. Yeah, it's just a fascinating discussion about all of that. And number one on my list is, of no surprise probably to you, it is The Only Plane in the Sky by Garrett M. Graff. The best audiobook I read last year probably. Um, it is a look at 9-11 from the perspective of many people that were on the ground that day. It tells stories that we have all heard before we recognize but also tells lots of stories that I didn't know about and I felt like I learned so much listening to this audiobook. It is an audiobook that was very compelling and even though it is very long I finished it very quickly. I definitely will tell you that if you read this book you will cry. It is very difficult um, but it's a book that I feel like I see myself going back to just to remember all the stories of that day and what happened and how the world truly changed that day. Yeah it's a very impactful 
hard to read but so necessary book that I recommend everyone read. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, please let me know in the comments if you're interested in any of these books or if you've read any of these books. The sun is almost all the way down now but I finished and we still have light. I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.